All right, joining me now is Gadi Adelman. He's a counterterrorism expert and advisor. Gadi, nice to have you back with us. And, and Gadi, the, the pay for slay policy, it rewards terrorism. The more Israelis killed, the more the terrorist gets paid. And, and in the case of suicide attacks, or if a terrorist gets killed or imprisoned, the money then goes to the family. How big a factor is the financial incentive in, in driving the terrorist attacks against Israel? Good evening, Michelle. Good to be back. You know, I think your your own individual uh, report right there just answered the question with the families that are receiving this funding, they rely on this money. And that says something because it really makes you wonder, and, and one does not have to be a rocket scientist or a counterterrorism expert to come up with the answer, how many of these individuals have gone out and committed terrorism solely on the basis that they knew their families were going to receive money. And if they die, as you said, the money, the amount goes up per month and their families receive that for the rest of their lives. What other country in the world would wanna pay for that? I mean, I tried to think of an example before coming on. There is not a country out there in the world that would be so stupid as to give funds to another nation to perform terror on them. Well, and, and to that point, uh, the U.S. passing the Taylor Force Act, Australia also saying it's no longer giving mm -hmm. the Palestinian Authority aid that's used for this. Now the Palestinian Authority is going to have less funds. So is it likely that there'll be a reduction in terrorist attacks? No, it's highly unlikely. And if anything, because of the way it's going to be portrayed by the Palestinian Authority and Mahmoud Abbas and the leaders of the Palestinian Authority, we're liable to actually see a rise in riots and violence. So it, it's unfortunate, but Israel cannot continue to fund. You know, this goes back to the Oslo Accords in 1994. This was an agreement that was signed by both parties that Israel would collect tax money and levies. And then once a month, they give that funds to the Palestinian Authority. They, they collect about 75% of the taxes of the Palestinian Authority. So why should they not deduct what they're admitting that they're committing terrorism? They're admitting by saying that they want to continue these payments and Israel is stealing their money. They're admitting they're a terrorist organization. Well, we are going to have another situation now uh, with the Palestinian uh, Authority and Abbas having less access to money. And that situation could cause instability in the West Bank and potentially Abbas being removed or, or overthrown. What do you think this could mean for Abbas? Well, you know, Abbas, first of all, he's not getting any younger. And as you know, he was hospitalized not that long ago. Um, I don't think that he's going to be around much longer in the sense of being able to lead the Palestinian Authority, regardless of whether or not this had happened and Israel cut the funding. So I, I think we're about to see a change. And as you mentioned, Australia is also cutting back funding. The United States passed the Taylor Force Act. Countries are starting to see the truth that the Palestinian Authority is not the underdog. They're not these poor downtrodden people living under apartheid. And as the world wakes up and sees the truth, I think we're going to see more and more countries stop funding them. So. You know, it's going to happen sooner or later, and I think Abbas is on the way out regardless. Well, it will be interesting to see uh, what happens to the Palestinian Authority leadership in that instance. And uh, if, in fact, there can be some kind of uh, unity government uh, between Fatah and Hamas. A lot of developments to watch out for, Gadi. We appreciate your analysis. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle.